What's up guys, my name is Brandon and today Apple released iOS 12.3 to the public after going through six beta stages. So of course in this video, like always, we're going to go over all of the new changes and features here in iOS 12.3. We're also going to talk about the performance and battery life. And then at the end, I will tell you whether or not you should update. All right, so let's go ahead and get straight into it. So you can see here the update came in at 2.67 gigabytes on my iPhone 10R. It was a little bit bigger on my iPhone 10s Max, but of course that size will vary. And then if we head over to our settings, general about, and then tap on 12.3, you can see there the new build number is 16F156. And while we're in this about section, I will show you that there is a new modem firmware update 1.05.03 if you were not on the beta stages, because this is the same modem firmware as beta 5 and 6. But if you weren't on the beta stages of iOS 12.3, this will be a new modem firmware for you. And that will help with connectivity issues if you were facing anything like that. All right, so now let's talk about what's new here in iOS 12.3. And the very first thing you're going to notice, and really the only main thing that's changed here with iOS 12.3 is the TV application. So you can already tell from the icon alone that the TV application got a complete overhaul. You can see this is what it used to look like. This is what the icon looked like on iOS 12.2 and below. And here's what it looks like in iOS 12.3 now. And if we go ahead and open up the TV application, you're going to notice that there is a lot of things that are new here. And of course, we have a whole new look inside of the TV application. So this is iOS 12.2. This is iOS 12.3. And you can see there is a big difference in pretty much everything with this application. Starting with the bottom, you can see there's only three tabs now instead of five tabs. So it's a lot more you know, organized than it was in the past. And there's also a lot of new things in here as well. You can see here we have channels. So you can subscribe to Apple TV channels like HBO, Showtime, Stars, Cinemax, Epics, and things like that. If you go and click on one of these, you can actually start a free subscription here. You can see you get a seven day free subscription for Epics, for example. So basically, if you buy one of these subscriptions, you'll be able to watch all of those shows like Game of Thrones or movies, whatever, inside of the TV application. So it will no longer, you know, you'll no longer have to download the HBO app or the Showtime app or anything like that it will all play inside of the TV application. And if we click on an actual show or movie, so Game of Thrones, for example, you could see that the whole experience is just so much more immersive. It's so much more modern looking here on iOS 12.3 now with the new TV application. You get a lot more information and everything's just laid out a lot better. And that's just a continuous thing that you're gonna see inside of the TV application, especially if you've used it before, you're gonna notice a big difference all throughout the whole entire application. There's also a new section here inside of the TV application called For You, and basically Apple uses machine learning to recommend you good TV shows and movies that you may like, which is pretty cool. And if you go over to the search tab, you can see the trending movies and TV shows here as well. And if you click on see all, you'll be able to see all of those right there in a really nice new layout. So this major overhaul in the TV application is in preparation of Apple's new subscription service called Apple TV Plus, which is going to be released later on this year. And if you go back to the home screen and go over to our widget section, you'll notice that we do also have a new widget for TV down here as well with a new icon right there. If you go ahead and add that, you can see this is what we have now for the TV application uh, widget here. Now also included in iOS 12.3 is added support for AirPlay 2 enabled TV. So now you can AirPlay content like TV shows, movies, whatever on your phone, you can stream it straight to your Samsung TV, your LG TV, your Vizio TV, whatever supports AirPlay 2, you're not gonna be able to do that with iOS 12.3 which is awesome. So you no longer need just an Apple TV, like an actual Apple TV to stream movies or TV shows to your TV. We did also get some minor changes to the wallet application. So if you use Apple Pay a lot, you will notice that you can see more transactions inside of your wallet now. And another small change here in iOS 12.3 is that if you're in airplane mode, you can now go into your cellular settings. Now I don't have a SIM card or anything, so I don't have anything showing here, but if you have a SIM card in here, you can actually see and change a lot of your settings, even when you're in airplane mode. Whereas before, if you're in airplane mode, basically cellular was grayed out and you couldn't even go in there. So that's pretty much all that's changed here in iOS 12.3. But let's go ahead and talk about the battery life, the performance, the connectivity and all that fun stuff. So starting with the battery life, battery life has actually been great here in iOS 12.3. Even throughout the beta stages, I was getting at least six and a half hours of usage and going to sleep with about 20% battery remaining consistently on both my iPhone 10R and my iPhone 10 S Max. You can see here is an example of my battery life that I've been getting on iOS 12.3. This was in the beta stage. As you can see, I'm getting close to seven hours of screen on time. And again, I was going to bed with about 20% battery remaining, which I would say is pretty solid. This was on beta five and beta six, which is pretty much going to be the same as the final build 
build here of iOS 12.3. So yeah, battery life is great on iOS 12.3, but compared to iOS 12.2, it's pretty much identical. You're not going to really notice any change in battery life, just updating from 12.2 to 12.3. So don't update if you're counting on that. Now, as far as performance goes, performance is also pretty good here on iOS 12.3, but once again, it's pretty much the same story as iOS 12.2. You're not really going to notice a big change jumping from 12.2 to 12.3 in terms of performance. Everything runs the exact same. Not really any hiccups. I haven't had any random reboots even throughout the beta stages, and I'm expecting the final build here to be about the same. Now, as far as connectivity goes for Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and cellular, I have not had any issues at all on iOS 12.3. I had minor issues on 12.2, so if you were having some issues with that on 12.2, iOS 12.3 may fix that, especially with that modem firmware update, so just keep that in mind. But me personally, I have not had any issues with connectivity in a little while now. So yeah, that's pretty much everything about iOS 12.3. Very small update, really only big change to the TV application. So should you update to iOS 12.3? And I say yes, if you care about the new TV application, or if you are having issues, connectivity issues, performance issues, battery issues, anything on iOS 12.2. But if iOS 12.2 is running perfectly fine for you and you don't care about this new TV application or Apple's new TV Plus subscription, then I would say no, don't update. You're not really missing out on anything. You're not really gonna have a ton of new features or changes or any kind of enhancements to anything really with 12.3. And of course, if you are into jailbreaking, the lower the firmware you stay on, the higher chance of you getting a jailbreak in the future. So yeah, that's pretty much it for this video. I hope you guys did enjoy it. If you did, make sure to hit that thumbs up button. Also leave a comment down below with whether or not you're updating to iOS 12.3 or not and why. So thanks again for watching the video guys and I'll see you soon.